the right side of the church to know is. I mean, uh, who are you a friend of? The bride. I think she's on the left side. What do you? Their solicitor, a friend of both. You can't sit in the center of the aisle. They'll trip over you. <laughs> what do you think, then? Most results keep sliding door closed, stand back and speak clearly. We call him when red light is on. I just thought. I, I just. Uh, 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 I just thought that I, I'd send you this record, Brenda, instead of leaving you a suicide note because it will be the first chance I've ever had of talking to you for three minutes without you interrupting me. There'll be a nice uh, dollop of money for my insurance policies. They'll definitely uh, pay out on suicide, but uh, so as not to cause you any undue embarrassment, I'm going to try for a verdict of misadventure. It's my intention to spend the night in the Wilminster Hotel and be found in paradise in the morning Having got there on an overdose of sleeping tablets, taken in error while, you know, intoxicated. And I know, you know, that you will join with me in uh, hoping that this last act of mine will be a little bit more successful than my attempts to earn my living over the past few years. If I fail, just wake up with a headache. We all say that's typical of fact. Yeah, well, in that event, or well, not event, um, I'll go to South America. By the way, I won't be seeing you again. All oh, that great mouth of yours that has never stopped going. That great nagging mouth that always never stops moving like a bum on a bicycle. No. I mean, quite frankly, Brenda, you, you've been a rotten cow, generally speaking. Yeah, and, and this morning, when I discovered that the reason Sid had, had been so generous to me over the years was because he has been knocking you off since 1957, and that Jonathan is probably not my son. Well, you know, I am uh, Charlie. But, you see, who cares? I mean, what does anything I say or do really matter now? Hmm? I'm indulging in this last extravagance of going to the Wilmington Hotel because I want to end our marriage where it began 20 years ago when you made your father sell his shop for us to have the reception there. You know, the big do which you demanded. So. Oh, I mean, as you said to me this morning, why don't you go somewhere quiet and just drop dead? Well, I, you know, I trust I can at least oblige you in one little matter. I'm sorry to leave my friends, Harry and uh, Stan and Sid and uh, old Mike. I mean, I'm uh, 20, uh, 4,632 pounds. Uh, but, you know, no doubt they'll be sorry also. <laughs> but I've done my best or worse, and all I can say now, you know, is piss off to the world because, you know, you can keep this boring knife. Yes, 
Well, I've still got a few moments left, so uh, I'll entertain you with a song. It may get me into the top ten posthumously. Oh, my hand, I'm a stranger in paradise. I just thought that I, I'd send you this record, Brenda, instead of leaving you a suicide note. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, for else hereafter forever hold his peace. I always want to shout out at this point, don't you? You know, shout out, stop, stop, let my wife Frida your Mary. That if either of you know any impediment, God have joined together, let no man put asunder. Have you ever been put asunder? As much as Norman John and Charlotte Mary have consented to I was asundered five years ago. I have witnessed the same before God and this company. And we divided the house into two. Not easy. And have declared the same by giving the marriage split up easier than the house. It's now two flats, two doorbells. In the name of the Father, she has the better half, of course. Are you asundered or not? I came asunder seven years ago. Since you are. Really? Do you know, at first I thought you were at school with a bride. She's 22. I know, I'm sorry, my mistake. Are you trying to chat me up? Sir? You've changed the place since I was here last. Oh, when was that, sir? 1953. We've been rebuilt since then, sir. Are you with the wedding party? No, no. My name is Hazzy. I've booked a single room for tonight. For how long, sir? Uh, just for one night. Ah, yes. If you'd like to fill in the registration card, please. Uh, and I'd like dinner here, if I may. What time, sir? 8.30. 8.30. Yeah, and I'd like to pay in it now for everything, if I may. Certainly, sir. Which breakfast will you be taking? Breakfast? The continental breakfast is included with your room. The English breakfast is extra. Uh, oh, uh, yes, well, put me down for the uh, continental breakfast in my room at uh, 6.45. Is it a good train, sir, Mr. Banbury? Not really. The last one goes at 7. Eight pounds, 25 pence, sir, including VAT.
Surely, we don't need continuity from each other. We don't need the promise of a future together, do we? I mean, you have your life in Banbury, I have mine in London. Our lives have touched for a few hours. At 7.14 p.m., you'll be on your train. I will. I'll be at a dinner party. We have six hours to spend together. Possibly the only six hours we ever will be together. True. But life is now, surely. What's happening now? It isn't what's going to happen next week or next year. This is it, the present moment. Every evening, we're one day poorer. So why not make the most of what the present moment offers? Don't you think you'd be better off chatting of one of those lovely dolly birds? Her, for instance. I'm sure she wouldn't be giving you anything like the trouble I'm giving you. And they do it all the time, that generation. So I'm told. She is lovely, yes. But there's nothing going on in her eyes. What's going on in my eyes? Oh, life, compassion, a sort of humorous skepticism. A look that says you've seen a lot of things, but you've decided that human beings are dark, vain, greedy, acquisitive, egotistical creatures. But you've realized they're only people, and you're no better, nor me. That's the So what it boils down to is that before I catch my train, before you go off to your dinner party with your high court judge, you would like me to go to bed with you for an hour. Oh, yes. That would be marvelous. I like that very much. For me, you're far and away the most beautiful woman here. You don't give up easily, do you? I'll go if you wish. No, I like it. I'll stay there. Because I do think you fancy me slightly. Not much, slightly. I say that because nature doesn't often allow us to fancy in a vacuum. If one fancies, it usually means some sort of returning signal has been given. I've encouraged you. Not consciously, but there has been a sort of instinctive reaction. I have to have a relationship, otherwise it's not worth it. Because that's why nothing much has happened to me in the last five years. Why am I telling you all this? Because you know I fancy you. I do, really. It only remains now to sort you out. More champagne? Excuse me. How would you fancy a gentle skirmish with me before you catch the 714 from Maryland? I think it would be ecstatic, personally speaking. But I don't demand an immediate answer. I don't demand an immediate. Yes, I'd love it. It might be my last chance. Oh, I'm sorry to offend you, but it has been nice meeting you, really. Oh, I'm sorry. That was I thought that we both enjoyed it, that's all. There's no future in it, of course. Then perhaps you're looking for a future rather than a present. I don't chat women up like this every day. But then it isn't every day one meets a woman like you. You only have my word for that. But I'll go. You go and get me another glass of champagne. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you all to join me in a toast to the bride and groom. Bride and groom. Talking Pictures TV.
We've been married for six years, and one day he announced he wanted to opt out of the rat race. Was your husband always in advertising? Yes. He packed it all up. We sold our house in Chiswick. He gave me half the money, and with this half, he went off to found this commune in Gloucester for hippies and dropouts. He wanted to do some good for the world, so the first thing he did was leave you with two kids. <laughs> sort of. Anyway, with my share, I went back to where I came from, Banbury, with my two daughters. And, uh... I bought this boutique with the flat above. You have very wicked eyes, Alan Gardner. In fact, you're probably a very wicked person altogether. Yeah. Too clever. You've sat there for two hours, egging me on, getting me to tell you all about my life, made me confess to you that this moment in time, I do feel a bit emotionally marooned and all that stuff. <laughs> But it's only because you want to get me into bed. True. But I have enjoyed listening to you. It's been very worthwhile. No. You're definitely a philanderer. I'm not surprised your wife couldn't live with you. But you said some very nice things to me. And I think you even mean some... Yeah. I think you'd be nice enough. One hour's diversion. And my one day's outing to London. But not if I can't catch the 7.14. Oh, of course not. My sister-in-law's meeting me at the station. Oh, I see. And it must be somewhere very private. Very discreet. <laughs> very close at hand. I'll organize it. I'll organize it so you don't have to travel in anything more than a lift. Um, if I do come back with a key, you won't have run out on it. I couldn't run anywhere at the moment. <laughs> oh, use an anonymous name, would oh, you? Yes. I mean, very discreet. But I'm sure it will be. Of course it will. Yes, sir. We have a double room for the one night. I'm sorry I can't give you a bathroom. Oh, that'll be fine, thank you. What's the name, please, sir? Windsor. Windsor. Brown. Doctor and Mrs. Doctor and Mrs. Windsor Brown. <laughs> After all this, you're not going to pass out of a drunken stew. Oh, don't worry about that. Mm. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I never thought when I caught my train this morning that I'd end up in a hotel bedroom with a randy lawyer and pick me up in church. Oh, <laughs> love that big light. Of course, my dear. <clears throat> I know it's inhibited, but that's the way I am. I like you the way you are. Oh! <laughs> Do you know, I think I'll just snip out and have a quick cold bath. You are certainly lurching <laughs> slightly. Yes, I'll have a little quick sober up. I won't be a sec. We passed a bathroom down the corridor. <laughs> I'll be five minutes. Don't start without me. <laughs> <laughs>
Wasn't too long, was I, Penelope? Had a marvelous cold bath. Oop. Very sober now. <laughs> and I still think you're the most smashing girl I've met for years, so it isn't the drink talking. <laughs> Where's that chair gone? Oh, bugger. Pardon me, I stubbed my toe. Here we are. <laughs> oh, blast, all my money's fallen out now. Never mind, we'll get it later. <laughs> I can't find the bed now. <laughs> Have you been moving the furniture around since I left? My wife used to do that. Oh, oh here we are. La -da -da. What a fantastic day. What luck, eh? Us just meeting like that. Just looking at each other and knowing there was no need for chat, pretense, or lies. Makes a fella feel lucky to be alive. Do you know, Penelope, the minute you walked into that church, I said to myself, I said, now, that is me. Oh, I... <laughs> Have I lost my bearings? Oh, well, I think you've come adrift somewhere. This is not my room. I'm in the wrong room, surely. Well, uh, there's no Penelope here. Alas. No, uh, this is room 154. Do you know? Do you know what I've done? You misread the number. I've misread the number. I'm not 154, I'm 104. No, no, I am definitely out of order here. This is the wrong room. How appalling. How stupid. My dear chap, I really am extremely sorry. That's all right. It's awful, barging into a stranger's room like this. Well, I wasn't doing anything. Absolutely ghastly. I'm so very sorry, my dear chap. I'll go now. <laughs> <laughs> Could you uh, just heave over my togs, old chap? Of course. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Extremely civil of you. <laughs> what a diabolical mistake. Do you know, I, I've never done anything like this before in my life. I'm absolutely shattered. Do please excuse me, old chap. Oh, no, that's OK. Yeah. And I say, I, you know, I wasn't doing anything special. Uh, have a brand in ginger ale. My dear chap, that's extremely congenial of you. I burst into your room, leap into your bed, call you Penelope, and now you offer me a drink. Really is most congenial of you. A small one would be most welcome. What generosity. Dude, I'm overwhelmed. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. You are going to join me, I trust. La da! <laughs> Your extremely good health and future happiness. Yeah, all the best. <sighs> you, uh, you've got some bird here, have you? It was all going too well, of course. I should have known there'd be some slight snag. Well, you'll be all right now, because your room can't be far from here, 104. Just round the corner, I expect. Oh, I'm fine now. You had a good day today, then, at this uh, wedding reception. Plenty of booze and that, I suppose. My dear chap, the champagne flowed like water. It was a lovely wedding. A most charming couple they made, too. Were well, the pals of yours? My company have been solicitors to both families for years. He's one of the Edgelys of Dorking, the blanky people. Oh, yes. Her family are very big farmers in Pusey. Oh, it's been an absolutely first-class day, enchanting wedding, lots of 64 Moe Chandon, and I met this lovely divorcee who hasn't had it for years. <laughs> lovely day, and it isn't over yet. Well, I'll say not. Damn <laughs> stupid of me barging in here like this, though. Well, so you talked into coming upstairs to bed with you, but as soon as you got in the room, you nipped out to have a quick bath. 
that will happen. Yes, I just thought I'd have a quick cold sponge to brighten myself up. The champagne suddenly hit me. Something rolled under here. <laughs> yes, well, she said turn out the light, then she got into bed. Very nice, too. <laughs> I said, well, I'll just live out and live back again. <laughs> oh, I see. But then you forgot you took the wrong turning. Well, it could happen to anyone. Well, there was no need to get all dressed up again just to nip out and nip back. Well, quite. Oh, thank you, my dear chap. Well, there I was, standing in the middle of the corridor, in my vest and pants, with this beautifully ripe woman waiting in bed for me, and I'd forgotten the room number. I could drive you mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about the small change, old chap. Leave it for the cleaner. Well, it's been extremely civil of you, my dear chap. Oh, I was glad of the company. Have one for the road. Do you know? I... Oh, I think I'd better not. <laughs> that brandy was just right. It set me up a treat. Any more, I shall be over the top. Besides, she's got to catch the 714 to Bambury, so I'll slope off now. Could you pass my towel? Uh, do you know, I've never had that sort of luck to meet a good-looking divorcee of 35, you know, who's looking for a bit. Well, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. one who needs cheering up on that day. <laughs> well, it's all just a matter of luck, isn't it? You know, it's like playing a sort of fruit machine. You've got a little ding, and you've got everything up has got to be in the right order. You've got to meet her at the right time, and she's got to be in the right mood, and, and you've got to have the right place to take her to. Uh. You know, I've never got all those three cherries up at the same time. I mean, mm -hmm. one cherry, uh, or one plum, a couple of cherries, <laughs> yes, you know. But I've never, you know, the jackpot. That's right, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your hospitality, my dear chap. Uh, not at all. No. Uh, Talking Pictures TV. Sky Broadband has introduced a Fiber Max speed guarantee. Tinker, tailor, soldier, failure. Is you okay? My dear chap. You keep coming back like a soul. Have a drink. I'm extremely embarrassed. The most terrible thing has happened to me. The only room number I can remember is 154. This is it? No, it is not it. Oh, is that what you're looking for? I agree. Now, was that too much ginger I gave you last time? Oh, no, no. I, I don't have any more drink. It's a drink that's bamboozled me already. And I'm usually so good at holding my liquor. No, I want to use your telephone to phone reception and ask the number of my room, may I? Oh, by all means. A million thanks. <clears throat> Hello, reception? Yes, reception, please. 
Hello. Uh, I wonder if you could tell me the room number of Mr. and Mrs. I don't believe it. What's happening to me? It's gone. It's completely gone from my head. Everything. What's up now? Not only have I forgotten the number of my room, I've also forgotten the false name I gave when I registered. Well, you want to sort that out? It's ten to six. My lady leaves at 6.30, and I don't know how to reach her. Ooh. You want to sort that out pronto? Absolute catastrophe. Well, it's not encouraging, I must admit. My entire mind's become a complete sieve. I can remember nothing. Yes, but bad this. But sip it slowly, and it will clear your head. You mustn't panic, that's the thing. Especially as you've only got 40 minutes left. You mustn't panic. No, hold on to it, me. Oh, no! No, no, I don't drink. Well, I'm having one. You are? Certainly. Oh, well, I just have this little snip to them. My God, this is terrible. The whole thing's becoming an absolute dog's breakfast. Half an hour ago, everything was lovely, and now... It's a dog's breakfast. I know what it goes like that. When they told an uncle of mine exactly how much he'd won on, on the pools, it brought all his old bladder trouble back. I mean, no life is a fancy ball. I mean, we all parade up and down in our fancy clothes and, and, and pretending, and then suddenly, you know, it strikes 12 and it's wreck time, and the, and the moving finger writes, and, and, and you know, it's all over. Bar the strings and arrows of outrageous fortune, and I do know, because I've had some. Pardon? I'm gonna panic. I'm gonna panic. That's the thing. You see, you've got to beware. Beware the enemy within. Now, look, let us reconstruct the events that have led you here. En route, we may get a clue. Now, you booked in under a false name, right? I don't see what that is. No, no, right. Now, listen, rely on me. I helped you once before. I help you again. You gave them a false name. Why? Because Penelope and myself were at this wedding reception downstairs. It was for her sake and mine. As family solicitor to both parties, I didn't want any... Well, these things can get out if you use your own name. So I use the nom de plume. Well, in this case, what you might call a nom de crumpet. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't laugh, Frank. It's tragic. <laughs> no, listen, let's all have a quiet drink and let the dog see the rabbit. Now... Yes, now, this is the situation as I see it. Either you remember your nom de crumpet... <coughs> you know, I'm feeling, be I'm feeling better already. Yes. Yes, either you remember your nom de crumpet, no, to the fact that this, or you go down to the foyer in your best pants and socks and say that you are the family solicitor to the happy bride and groom and you put your cards on the table in the middle of the foyer. I can't go downstairs dressed like this. What size shoes do you take? Well, tens, why? Well, that's deceptive. I take sevens. You won't be going to the ball in mine. But listen, you could borrow mine, Matt, because we have the same chest, don't we? Forty-two. Ah, oh, yeah, snap. I can't go downstairs in your Mac and no shoes. Do you realise I'm a public notary? And I'm known to half the wedding guests. I mean, they'll be leaving now. Supposing I met someone in the foyer in, in my vest and socks. I mean... What would I tell the receptionist? They'd, they'd call in the house detective. I'd be struck off. This whole thing's becoming an absolute de facto cock-up. Well, I didn't advise you to go downstairs. I was merely putting out the choices open to you. Quite, yes. I mean, I personally wouldn't go downstairs in my foyer in my vest and socks and pants and your Mac, especially as I was pissed as you are. My dear chap, I'm quite capable of handling this myself. I've had a few drinks, but I'm perfectly complimentous. Goodbye. But you've got nowhere to go, except this room. Right, now. The third choice is for you to knock on all the doors on this floor and see who answers. There must be a hundred rooms on this floor. That's right. Now, assuming 30 seconds a room, and if your friend is in the last room, you know, and we must rely on Lady Luck in this matter, we must be prepared for the worst, you know, but hope for the best. That's a hundred rooms. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's 50. That would take you 50 minutes to find her. 
But by that time, she'd have left anyway. My dear Teb, I can't go round knocking on hotel rooms. Supposing somebody answered, what do I say? I've lost my bit of crumpet, is she in there? My God, don't you realise I'm a public notary? If I go around knocking people up in my vest and pants, I'll become a public notoriety. Right. Well, the third choice is for us to go through the alphabet, hoping we find a letter that jogs your memory. My dear chap, now, that is extremely good thinking. Eh? I said yes, good thinking. Mr. and Mrs. A. What? No. A doesn't ring a bell. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. No. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Hold it. Hold it just there. You're jogging something. Now, what did I sign? Yes, yes. No, I didn't book in as Mr. and Mrs. I used some kind of a title. Uh, Lord and Lady Smith? No, nothing as high flown as that. Sir George and Lady Smith? No, no, but it's good thinking, first class thinking. No, it was a respectable title, but not too grand. Uh, the Reverend and Mrs. Smith? Hold it, hold it, just there. No, it wasn't a vicar. It was a lodger. Pardon? Nothing. Go on. It was something socially similar to a vicar. Wait a minute. It, it, it's coming. It's almost there. Hold it. Yes, yes. Ye doctor! Doctor and Mrs. I booked in as Doctor and Mrs. Doctor and Mrs. who? Don't be so damn ridiculous. I wouldn't use a name like that. Draw attention to myself. I mean, which Doctor and Mrs.? What? Oh, yes. Doctor and Mrs. Smith? No. What's happening to me? I simply can't remember. I simply do not know. Soup. Something to do with soup. What kind of soup? Something to do with soup. Doctor and Mrs. and then the name of a soup. What kind of soups are there? Uh, what sort of soups are there? Well, there's... Uh, there's Malacatoni. No. Uh, green pea. Uh, uh, Miss Stoney, no. uh, there's a soup you're now in. No, honestly, I'm on your mm. side. Uh, listen, there's uh, Dr. Mrs. Uh, cream of chicken. No. A uh, Vichy Soirs. A uh, tomato. There's a... No. Uh... <laughs> I'm very sorry. I'm just, just a soup I was thinking of. Tell me, tell me. Doesn't matter how ridiculous it sounds, it's almost like it's on the tip of my tongue. What kind of soup? Well, it's just... It's just... A... <laughs> no, I mustn't. I mustn't. Please! Well, it's just I was thinking of you signing the register as Dr. Mrs. Soup of the Day. Oh. <laughs> It just tickles me. It's not a joke to everyone's face. My God, this is ridiculous! Doctor and Mrs. I know it is, and then the name of a soup. Or was it some kind of hors d'oeuvre? Stop, stop right there, and don't force it. We'll quickly pencil in the events up to this point. Now, you gave them a false name, they gave you a key. Which I dropped on the floor. Penelope picked it up, and she found the room. Got it! We're there! Where? What you just said means that she knows the room number. Yes. Now, can we contact her? How she's in the room, I can't remember. That's a pity. Otherwise, it's foolproof. Now, listen, you went into the room, she said, draw the curtains. No. She drew the curtains. I put out the light, then she got into bed, and I said, I'll nip out... Is that no your cold bath? This be no. Now, during the time you were in the room, do you remember seeing a key like this? What? A key? Yes, of course, the key! I put it in my jacket pocket. It, which is... No, don't tell me. Right, so in actual fact, you have never even kissed her. No. I don't see what that's got to do with it. Uh, what, you, you might have put the key down while you kissed her? I've never even held her hand. I paid 14 pounds for that room and here I am. With only 30 minutes left. Oh, my God, this is... Terrible! Well, I don't like it either. I don't like it one little bit. What name did I give? What name? Doctor and Mrs. What? R Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, don't, Frank. Listen. Now, listen. You mustn't panic. If you panic, all is lost. Where are you going? I'm going to do you a big favour. I'm going to go downstairs. I'll try and... in the foyer. And mm -hmm. I'm going to try and pull your chestnuts out of the fire. You are? You will? Do you think you can find out for me? Well, it's always easier for a third party. Besides yes. which... Nobody knows me in SW1. Oh. The only place that I'm recognised is West Byfleet, and they don't want to know me. Now, you man the fort here, now a little snifter, and I'll be back as soon as I've got any news. My dear fellow, this is extremely courteous no, of no, you. No, no, don't, don't thank me yet. 
because I might come back empty-handed. Meanwhile, you've helped yourself to anything I have here. My brandy, oh. my, my sleeping tablets, my leaky ballpoint pen, my writing paper. You just help yourself. Just relax. And I, I leave it to me. Thank you. Now, where is it? Uh, do you have any doctor and missus? I, I've got it somewhere. I just can't find it. They always have trouble with their name in England. Well, all we have registered is a doctor and Mrs. Windsor Brown. It's Brown Windsor? Yes. That's... Uh, yeah, well, uh, very clever girl. Yes, Dr. Mrs. Windsor Brown. Yes, yes. Well, I've got it here. Yes, quite right. Uh, so they have arrived. Yes, sir. Would you like me to ring them? No, 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 because they're very tired. They've been travelling all night. I'll pop in and see them later. Yes, uh, what uh, floor are they on? First floor, sir. Room 145. Thank you very much. Thank you. Such a lovely dose. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Oh, it must be six. Oh. Still, we've got half an hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, I knew you were going to be lovely. Oh, you wicked thing, you. Oh, I say. Oh, that was great. Oh. You got lost. Was your lady friend wearing a blue coat? No, a brown suit. Why? I, I, there's no time for details. Your room is one four five. One four five. <laughs> of course, <laughs> one four five. <laughs> My dear fellow, many thanks. One four five. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, there you are. You do keep popping in and out. I'm just making myself respectable. Oh. Then I'm off. What? But, look, I, I can understand you being peed, Penelope. I've been rather long. The trouble was, I got locked in the bottle. But there's still time. Peeved? <laughs> Me? I'm delighted. <laughs> Honestly, this has been one of the most exciting days of my life. No, really. I mean it. Nothing like this has happened to me in Banbury for years. It was super. Oh, yes. Well, why don't we just, um, hmm, we've still got buckets of time. No, Alec, I couldn't. Not again. It's only 20 for... Again? Oh, it was so fantastic the first time. It would only spoil it. Pardon? <laughs> I think you're a terrible old lecher, and I fully realize that I'm one small incident in your life. I know I'm nothing special to you, but credit where it's due, I must say you really are super at it. Me? Oh, you're so tender, so sensitive. You really do make a girl feel so marvelous. But I haven't done anything. Oh, you really are the most amazing man. I never realized you were so modest. I like that. Oh, well, I'm off now. I mean, nice time for my turn. Now, look, no, look, Don't bother to see me out. Just stay there in your vest and pants. I want to remember you just like that. Lovely day. Bye. Oh. 
explosive. The next train to Banbury will be the 1914 departure from Platform 4. Mr. 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 Mr.